Welcome to season three of No Shelf Control, the podcast with books, booze, and banter hosted by authors for readers, because let's face it, we're all bookworms at heart. This season, we're reading and discussing indie books, and we couldn't be, I don't know why I always say it like that. Indie books. Indie books. <laughs> and we couldn't be more excited to be spreading the word about other independent independent authors like ourselves. I'm Lindsay Sparks. And I'm Lindsay Pogue. Grab a <laughs> cocktail or beverage, ah! kick back, and enjoy the show. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I have a little, a really fascinating surprise for you guys tonight. Did you I'm drink? drinking alcohol <laughs> on the show. Woo! Bringing the, 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 booze, the booze back, back. into the banter and the books. <laughs> nice. Uh, I am drinking a poppy oh Oh, nice is that sparkling water it is i've never seen one kind of of. it's they call it a prebiotic soda oh yeah yeah yeah. okay um anyway it's supposed to help with gut health so yeah and they're weirdly addicting so nice and they don't have very very much they have 25 calories nice but it's got a little little more oomph to it than just like a sparkling water so Hey, you got to change it up. Yeah. I usually just have one a day. It's like my treat when I sit down to work in the afternoon, but um, it's so podcast night. I was going to say, does that mean you're having two or did you put yes, on the tree? It oh, does. my Lanta. Okay. <laughs> I love it. So, I love it. Living wild. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, well, since we're talking about drinks, I'll just segue into mine. I actually, Dennis, um, since we had the podcast tonight, Dennis tries to cook dinner on the nights that I have podcasts. So, uh, he's making, he made a really delicious tri tip and everything. Mm. And I got to like, I was on a writing roll. It worked out perfectly. Cause I was on a writing roll. And so I was just like, Oh, I gotta keep going. But I was getting so tired. And I'm like, Lindsay, give yourself some a little oomph, man, go get some, get some bubbles, get something. Do you have the podcast anyway? Like, you know, do it, do it, do it, do it. So I opened a bottle of bubbles. <laughs> Good. So, um, I've pretty much had about one glass in the last two hours. Um, <laughs> I did put a little splash of a cold refill in here because it was a little warm. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's exciting. Um, and hey, guess what? Now I have a bottle I have to finish tomorrow. Yay! There is a method to the madness, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Forcing yourself to drink more. Yeah, life's a rough man. <laughs> Good I have some my water, though, too. Yeah um okay so what have you been working on lately okay um I have been oh I didn't even do an intro sorry oh, yeah we totally sorry. skipped over it we did we did <laughs> backtrack all right go ahead okay reverse it um welcome to season three episode four of no shelf control uh for this episode we read and we'll be discussing savage lands by Stacey Marie Brown it is a dystopian fantasy that I think would appeal to uh, fans of our dystopian fantasy series, uh, which is the ending legacy starts with World After and then the Raven Queen. Um, so I just had to put that out there. If, I have if... more to say about that later when we get to the, your question about com- oh. comparable series too. Oh, cool. <laughs> I, have, I have, have to remember, I have my notes on my phone. So I have to remember to, I'm going to pull those up right now. Um, so but I, yeah, no, I was, so I, I'll just kind of mention this while you're doing that. I have seen, you know, this cover, I've seen this cover a lot. It shows up in our also bots, which is also dash bots as in like also purchased on Amazon for, yeah. yeah, that's like a lingo thing. I don't know if yeah. the readers know, but anyway, not like also robots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but it shows up a lot as in readers kind of like you know our stuff and this series as well so I've been seeing it for a while I've been really interested because it comes up as post-apocalyptic a lot and so I've been wanting to read it but every time I see the word fey which I don't yeah. have an aversion to fey like you do but <laughs> no. I I'm also like post-apocalyptic and fey that just sounds weird to me so I never really took a chance on it so um just I'm just saying that so that, you know, going into it, I didn't have like, it has great ratings, but a lot of stuff we read has great ratings and I'm not like amazed by it. Like that one thing. Like, yeah, 
um, <laughs> that one thing that will not be named that we will never will mention to, because you'll have you're to not gonna email us or message us if you really want to know what it is <laughs> um but yeah so uh just saying that going into it I didn't have like crazy like high expectations so it'll be fun to talk about it yeah and I, I a note on the Faye thing I don't think once that they mentioned any pointy ears and I feel like that might be my your fate, thing your hang up my fate yeah. aversion is the pointy ears perhaps Legolas yeah I don't know what Legolas comes is. in with this bow and arrow maybe it's because like in all of the fan art that is like there's so much fairy porn fan art fa- so like maybe but it's just like the ears just keep getting like pointier and pointier and I'm just like (laughs) oh my god like how pointy are they're gonna be like up here well it could also just be it's kind of like you know the whole like was it ash and bone what is it ash and bone or what is it shadow and bone shadow and bone yeah or at it yeah all of those no not shadow blood and and ash blood and ash yes thank you from blood and ash yes from (laughs) thank you so it's like, but you see so much about these books and so much art, even if they're amazing, you get tired of them. It's the whole, I always go back to this. It's the whole reason why I never got into Harry Potter. I was so sick of hearing and seeing yeah. everything. Harry I Potter. think that's how I feel so about I think, the fourth wing right now. I'm like, oh my God, stop. Yeah. Stop with the fourth. I'm, su- I'm sure it's a great book. I was just talking to one of our author friends this morning and she read it and she said it was a great book. And I was just like, oh my God. Like, yeah. I'm sure I would love it. I'm sure I would. But I'm also just like, I'm so, so tired it. of seeing yeah. it on my Instagram feed. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. And so I'm just wondering if maybe Faye for you is kind of like that too. Because a yeah. lot of the a lot of the books that we read in this genre have Faye in them. So yeah, all the fan art yes. has Faye. They all has Well, and like, like the most know. popular um, author for fan artists to create fan art yeah. for yeah, is Sarah J. Mass. Mass. Yeah. And that's all Faye stuff. And it's just like, I get it. It's just like, oh, it's just, it's overwhelming. It's like, I would love some variety. Yeah. No. So anyways, that I, I, yeah, I just was like post-apocalyptic and Faye, like, I don't know. It didn't really Mm -hmm. intrigue me. So I kind of skipped over it, but I've always loved the covers and it has great ratings. So I'm glad we finally, finally read it. Yeah, I, I am too. Um, I have to write down another comp series that you just made me think of um sorry okay uh okay um how many times can I say okay (laughs) uh what are you currently working on uh so I've been having a lot of fun with mini fiction I think I might have touched on it last time but I finally was able to start writing it this last week and it went into this weekend too so it's been really fun to have readers give me ideas of things that they really want to know about, especially the series that I haven't visited in a while, you know? So I did a couple alternative POVs for Jackson for The Darkest Winter, which is really fun and an extra, just a bonus scene, something I just made up. Um, and then I think I might've mentioned it last time, but I wrote a um, like an entirely like separate kind of spinoff continuation short story for Sea of Storms, which was really fun mm-hmm. with Basher. It takes place a few years later. So that was really cool. Basher is um, an yeah. awesome character also. Yeah, so. she's really fun. Mm-hmm. And I felt like when I was writing, and that's the other thing too, is it's like, you kind of forget like how much, I don't know, for me anyway, I kind of forget about these characters, right? And then I sit down because the readers want to, you know, read X, mm-hmm. Y, and Z. And then you have to like get back in their mindset. And I'm just like, I'm writing this thing and then Basher's like, no, 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 that's not, <laughs> that's not badass enough. And I'm like, oh God, that reel it in, Lindsay. Okay. I got to figure out where I'm going with yeah. the story. So, well, I think anyway, I'm, I'm really excited that you're enjoying it because I was really, I know I talked up writing like the alternate POVs mm-hmm. and the bonus stories and the things that the readers wanted me to write. I know I talked that up a lot. Um, and I was worried that you weren't yeah. going to enjoy it, but, uh, I think that one of the most fulfilling things about it is the sense of discovery like because you're getting into the a lot of times getting into a point of view that you didn't write the story in and so it reveals things yeah no it's fun that you didn't know that as the author I'm definitely trying to find the balance between because I'm also I'm I don't think I'm gonna once I get all like the mini fiction is gonna stay the way it is I'm gonna write it as I have time for it and as people vote on it um through my subscription service um but I also 
yeah, Reamers, my Reamers, <laughs> that we're not calling them that. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm going to continuously write the mini fiction, but I'm not, um, I don't want to keep writing two stories simultaneously. So once I get these done, it's really hard to like switch every week to go be not, not hard. And then like, it's more like I have to refamiliarize because it's been essentially two or three weeks between each session. And so mm -hmm. I have to go back and reread like three chapters just or four chapters just to figure out where I'm at and then resettle in and then try and like get on a, in a groove again. And then by the time I get in a groove, it's time to move on. And so I don't like that. So mm -hmm. I think I think I'm going to have like one big story at a time and then moving forward, like after I get some of these wrapped up on on my end, like what I already have going so like uh, Skies of Fire, I think when that that's going to be done fairly quickly compared to Born of Salt and Sea. So I'm going to uh, once that's done, I think I'm going to focus on one, get that wrapped up and then move on to something new and have like one main project and then have the mini fiction. I just feel like that's going to be better for my readers, too, because they're, they're not used to me writing in chunks and having access that way. Um, I think a lot of them like they want instant gratification. They want to read the whole thing. So mm -hmm. the faster I could write it, the better. Um but that being said, I've also decided that um, I know there's a lot of readers who are never going to be able to or just simply won't become a subscriber. And I totally get that because I'm also not one of those people. I don't mm -hmm. I'm not like you. I know you have a lot of subscriptions. I really don't like I like my streaming service, maybe, but I'm not a subscription person. Yeah. So I feel like I need to also I don't want to um, like like single out those people and be like, well, you're not going to get anything until I decide to publish, which yes, it's true because I don't, I don't have all these deadlines for me to publish this year and next year. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'm mm -hmm. kind of just writing however I want, but I am going to start offering it. Uh, you can buy it at my bookshop. So that way, mm -hmm. if you really, if you don't want to pay the $5 a month or the $10 or whatever it is, depending on what, you know, kind of access, you know, you can have based on those tiers, then you can just go buy it. And you know, it's a one-off. So I'm at yeah. least going to do that. So I can't like, but I'm not going to go publish like, these. Like you're going to let them buy the unedited version. Yeah. You're just going to buy, you can buy it if you really, cause I've had readers. When it's like, done. Okay. Yeah. So like, cause readers are like, okay, well, I'm probably never going to go to Ream. So is there any way that I can buy it on Amazon? I was like, well, you can't buy it on Amazon because the stuff isn't even like, yeah, you just can't. But you could definitely buy it at my bookshop. So for 99 cents, $1.99, whatever it is based on, you know, what I've oh, written. Like, and... per, like per episode yeah. or per yeah. part. Yeah. That's an well, interesting these, these are, idea. Well, these are completed. I mean, they're completed things. I'm not going to, I'm not posting serials up there. I'm posting like actual like story, like whether it's 17 pages or five, like I'll mm -hmm. be posting. Them oh, I see the mini fix. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I'm under, I don't know why I was being dense. I was like, not, no, no, no. I, I probably wasn't clear, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So the mini fix, the mini fiction specifically, cause a lot of readers like, Oh, I would love to read that, but I'm never going to be able to go on to read. And I was like, okay, well then you can get in my bookshop, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's not going to be stuff that's going to be available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all that, because they're not books. They're not even novellas. They might be at some point, but for now if you want to read them now then you can just get them in my bookshop so yeah I'm gonna start doing that I like that that's like um it's not like but uh my uh all of my uh like all of the stories that I have written for that are echo trilogy based are going to be inside of the special editions that I'm doing mm -hmm. and so like people who aren't subscribers they'll be able to get the special edition ebook versions if they want, if they don't want to fork up the like yeah. obscene amount of money that the hardcovers are going to cost, they can still get the special edition ebook versions that are going to be like 10 bucks a pop. And then those will have all of the stories in yeah. them also. Yeah. And then, so. yeah, there's just, there's a lot of, yeah. I mean, there, anyway, it, we can, it's all for another time, but anyway, I've just been really kind of playing with that and, um, it's just fun to be able to, like I said, go and do all these things. And I forgot how much I love Jackson and missed him. And I just got to write two stories back to back. And this is fun, you know, because it's like, how long has it been since I wrote him? Like, yeah. it's been a long time. And he's one of my favorite characters ever. So yeah. I don't know. It was just really cool yeah. to be able to go back and do that. So anyway, <laughs> that's what I've been working on. It's been really fun. Um, and I'm excited to keep keep writing them. And it's cool because like last month, I only wrote one thing because the tides of fate, the 
basher story was it was like 20 pages long so it took me a little while to like figure out the story and get into it and stuff but um this month I've already written like two or three things and what we're only like the first week so that's what's fun is like I can go at all these different paces based Mm -hmm. on you know so anyway I think that's probably fun for subscribers too because then they don't I mean some some weeks they might get three things you know some week yeah some weeks they might just get one or or months but yeah so yeah anyway yeah but how about you you um I have been working on uh last time had I sent my finished rise of the revenants and sent it to my editor I can't remember. I think so. Well, well it's hard to know what I know. I know. Re- I, I know. know. I think anyway, so. Anyway, if though. I hadn't, I have done that. So now I am feeling the freedom of not having a major, sorry, I have like hicc- baby hiccups, um, not having a major project looming over me. You're using Holly? I'm using Holly. Yeah. 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 Um, and so now I'm just working on my, um, m- I need to stop saying Patreon and I have to start saying membership, my like membership serials and stories, because I officially have, am making the move to Ream. Um, I let my patrons know today, this morning, well, which will be in the past when you listen to this. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I've had, I think about a quarter of them move over so far, which I feel like is pretty good for yeah. day one. Um, there have been a few hiccups, nothing too crazy, but I think that's to be expected. Um, and I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty details because the listeners don't care, (laughs) (laughs) even if you would, (laughs) um, but I'm really excited. Uh, I love that Reem has Reem versus Patreon. I love that Reem has like a reading app. Like it has like a platform, like the stories are inside of a reader, a reader yeah, by chapters or parts or whatever. Yeah. Like I don't have to like link to the next one within a post. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, (laughs) you don't have to have like a bibliography or whatever. At the end of the top. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I have a master index at the top of my There you go. That's what, yeah. Um, because I release four things every month for my subscription. Yeah. And it like it has become a very long master index. So this is nice. Now there's just like eight or ten things on there. Um and and it's all organized and everything. So I'm really happy about that. Um and yeah, I'm just excited to get like kind of like get people moved over there and experience this new platform. So that's what I've been working on, but I've been also doing some fun, like design work. I got to do the images for it. Uh, and I worked on a sticker for the Kickstarter for the Echo Trilogy special editions that I'm really excited about. So I've been doing just like some fun, more like artsy graphic kind Mm -hmm. of things. Finally dusted off the iPad after after like six months of not using it. So (laughs) actually like doing some drawing Nice. So it's nice. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's fun to. Oh, you know what I'm going to tell? I didn't tell you. And I, I know readers don't care, but I have to say just because she's also. <laughs> well, so I talked to. Um, do you remember Jesse um, uh, who we met at the um, Smarter Artist Summit? And she's been on. She was on the show for her mm-hmm. sci-fi. Um, I talked to her the other day we caught up and anyway we can talk more about it but I just thought it was fun to mention now because she's also been a guest on the show Mm -hmm. Um, I don't ask I off the top of my head I can't recall the series that she came on for but she writes really cool like sci-fi adventure stuff Um, and so anyways uh, it was really fun to talk to her and catch up and so I'll fill you in on that but um, she's super nice yeah anyways yeah (laughs) moving on but yeah, remind me we should talk about that yes. because it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Talk about I don't know, it's kind of fun to like how long have we been really been doing this show? Like I'm trying to think like how has it been like a three years? years. Now? I think three years yeah. maybe. Like that's insane. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's insane. We have a lot of episodes out and we do it every other week. So anyway, we're not sorry. Those weekly people. We can't read that much. 
my, it's already hard enough as it is for me. So we're good. We're good, peeps. We're good. I also have book club and my own like to be read list. So I have children. So yeah, that too. So, anyway. Um, okay. So what have you been reading? So I have two, I have an update for you all. Um, last episode, we were talking about the fine print and I was going to keep reading that series. Remember to tell you guys what I thought. I downloaded uh, the audiobook of book two, which is Terms and Conditions, and I was not a fan of the narration, but I returned it. My first audiobook ever returning, so don't throw stones. Well, maybe that's just an author thing because I hate it when people <laughs> constantly return books. But anyway, um, yeah, so I returned it and I got the paperback and I loved it more than the first one. So I really? definitely recommend, yeah, I definitely recommend if you like the fine print and you didn't continue on, even if you sort of liked it, like read the what second book. What was the second book called? Uh, Terms and Conditions. And it's about Declan and his assistant, Iris. And it's very, very good. And I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. So I definitely Can you tell us that. like any tropes because the first one was very tropey so like um workplace romance um grumpy sunshine 100 percent um there's i think there's an age gap too i think it's like maybe 10 years if i remember correctly um billionaire um i mean it's an erasal i'm trying to think of what else uh, 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 uh oh um uh fake what do they call it? like fake or fake relationship fake or engagement it? or fake, fake engagement fake yeah i mean they get yeah fake marriage fake oh marriage. fun <laughs> um yeah it was fun it was a lot of fun i really liked it and i was so wrong about the dad you guys i was like i don't i feel like they're trying to do red herring and like he's not gonna be that bad oh he's so bad and booked really it. so bad so okay. he's horrible we hate him just so everyone okay. knows we hate him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, well, so I, I definitely recommend that one. And then I pulled, um, I had a read day, guys, that was like, all I did all day on Sunday was read. I showered and my husband fed me and <laughs> Baby. I, I literally didn't do anything. Um, so yeah, I read a book called A uh, Beast and Beauty by Oh, Shand you sent me a picture of it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's Chandra or Chandra uh Han. And it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but like of the best kind. It's it seems it feels very original. It has a little bit of magic for you magic system folks out there, but it it's not like so in your face that it was annoying to me. Um, because sometimes I feel like it takes over a story and it gets mm. too complicated. It was very nice. It was like a touch of magic. Um, it was, I felt like it was really original and creative. It was really well-written. I love the characters. Um, and <laughs> there's a cross-dressing goblin that is amazing. <laughs> I think his name's like Gobber Snot or something like that. <laughs> Absolutely loved him. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend that book. It's definitely, it's like very, it's very romantic, but it's not a romance. It's, it's, I think, even though I think the heroine is around 20 or 22 or something like, I think she's 22. It feels more YA in that, um, just like, it's very like fade to black, closed door, that sort of thing. Um, but it's very well written and very good. And I enjoyed it. And there's seven books in this series. So each sister, uh, gets a book so I don't know I'm kind of I, I I think I might keep going we had a little technical difficulty so if there's a rough transition there that's why um so we're just going to move on to what I've been reading we're unless you have live more action <laughs> yeah no, unless you have more books to talk no, about no no okay. just a beauty and a beast and beauty a beast and beauty by Shanda Han or yes. Shanda, or I don't know how you say that how okay. about you what books do you have recommends <laughs> Um, I only have the book that we have been reading to recommend. Okay. I'm on book two, so <laughs> um, I would recommend the series. I've already recommended it to someone in real life. <laughs> so in live action. Mm. Um, yeah, so, so book two is Wildlands um by Stacey Murray Brown. So yeah. Um, and I'm not gonna say anything about it because we're about to talk all about savage lands 
<laughs> I'm excited. Let's do this. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is the point of the show where if you have not read the book and you do not want to be spoiled, um, you should stop listening right now. Let's do it. Well, I mean, I'm going to read the description and then you should stop listening. But anyway. Um, okay. So uh, almost 20 years after the barrier between Earth and the other world fell in the Fey Wars, Budapest is balancing on the precipice. A battle for dominance is brewing between the elite Fey and the privileged humans in Eastern Europe. The prejudice between the sides is bubbling with hate and violence. 19-year-old human Brexley, what a name, mm -hmm. has grown up in privilege, but not without heartbreak. After being orphaned, she is taken in by General Marcos. Living in a walled city rife with power, grabs, and ruthless political games. Then, one night, the course of her life changes, and Brexley is thrown into the most feared prison in the East. Hal... Hal... I can't remember how they say it in the audience. I can't either. I'm just make it up. <laughs> Blah blah blah. Hala has. Hala has. Uh, the house of death. Where you go in, but you don't come out. She must learn to live with the worst of the Fey and human criminals. The rule of hierarchy puts humans on the bottom, where the only way to survive each day is to make alliances with the Fey. Here she meets the sexy, vicious legend Warwick Farkosh. I feel like they always said it with Farkosh. No. With yeah, they did. Uh, a myth among man and a fae. He is as brutal, cruel, arrogant, and as lethal as the lore says he is, ruling the prison with unchallenged authority. Brexley can't deny an intense draw to him, one that might cost her life. If the games don't take her first, take her out first, a fight to the death where only one... This doesn't make any sense. Did I read it wrong? <laughs> If the games don't take her out first, a fight to the death where only one survives. Uh, I can't tell if it's me or the sentence. Um, As we said, live action, folks. <laughs> <laughs> this series, I do words, is set <laughs> in the same world as the Darkness series, the Collector series, and the Lightness saga, but can be read alone. Though there are a lot of hidden gems for the other books in there. So this was something I did not know until I grabbed this description from Amazon right before we started recording. <laughs> that this is like part of a connected- Huge world, yeah. 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 I mean, it makes sense like that there could be so many other stories written about- Oh, like, yeah, for sure. When the, about the Fey Wars and like when the wall fell and like all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I'm not surprised in the least. Yeah, I actually went and checked and I actually have- some city of ember or in ember or something I, anyways one of the collector books i have oh fun i didn't realize yeah oh cool. um okay so uh now you should definitely stop listening if you don't want to be spoiled yes we're going to be talking about <laughs> yeah a lot of and stuff. there is a twist at the end of this book that we will spoil yes good point so there's that okay so what format did you read i listened I thought the narrator was great. I also listened and I also thought the narrator was great. She was very dramatic. Yeah. Sorry, baby hiccups again. Oh my gosh. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. What did you think of the story overall? I thought it was really good. I thought it was really cool. Um, it has a lot of layers. It has, um, it has really good pacing. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to Budapest, so it was really fun to read about like a fate world and prison and all that kind of stuff, um, even though it's very different. But um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I thought it was clever. I liked it. And I did like the feel of it. Like it, it didn't feel 100% fantasy, but it didn't feel it because it's also modern. Like it's contemporary Yeah, they had like too. motorcycles. Yeah. And, and so I like that like, aspect. There's like- it's kind it of gritty it's yeah very and it gritty, was cool which is what I like. it was cool the way she talked about how like technology the fey magic kind of interferes with technology so that people have been trying to have had to like figure out and invent new ways to make technology work mm -hmm. like kind of like with or around fey magic so that's been interesting yeah but overall I, I really enjoyed it um yeah it was not really what I thought it was going to be 
But then again, I don't really, all the times I've looked at it, I don't even remember what I really thought of. And I was like, meh, <laughs> but I'm I glad had, I read it. Yeah, I'm like, glad I, I read it. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Obviously I'm on book two. Um, I <laughs> also didn't, I, I knew, I thought there was like some dystopian aspect. Um, although I didn't like really know that was just an assumption and it was turned out to be right. So yay. Um, and I knew there was like a fantasy element. So that was, those were my assumptions that I went to with this. Um, and I feel like I have heard on Instagram, um, and probably on TikTok when I used to do that, uh, that it's like emotionally traumatizing or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't feel like Savage Lands was. No, it's not worse than most of the other things that we've read. Yeah. So Um, I'm curious to see what exactly could be happening. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really like the post-apocalyptic aspect of it. I think that's why it was hard to figure out if I wanted to read it or not, because it's like fantasy and post-apocalyptic. And then by the time I was done, I was like, yeah, Lindsay, you write the shit. So like, I mean, there's no fae, but like, this is essentially what we, yeah. like, modern day superpower yeah. shit. So it's, I'm like, okay, that was silly to like turn my nose up at it or whatever. Not that yeah. I really did that, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. But yeah, so no, I did enjoy it and I'm glad I read it and I like the feel of it. Um for sure. I think it's fun. It's different. It's a lot different. Yeah. And it, um, is like, it's like very hooky, I think. Um, uh, like, I just want to know what's going to happen next. I just want to know. (laughs) Yeah. I was just like, even when I was getting frustrated in some parts, Mm -hmm. I was like, but I, I need to know the answer to this. Like, yeah. ASAP. (laughs) Like, yeah, I'm waiting. I'll keep listening. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and it was definitely one where I was like trying to figure out ways that I can like stick my earbuds in my ears yeah. more because I wanted to I was like come on let's keep going like I'm gonna I'm gonna make a long dinner tonight or something. yeah I did the same thing uh today I mostly got nothing done because I was listening all day and I was like I would I would sit here and be like okay I'll do some admin stuff while I'm listening and uh, like five minutes later just staring at my screen like listening I was like oh Lindsay come on but I didn't want to miss stuff you know because yeah. I, I'm like did I already miss the explanation of X, Y, and Z? You know, because there's yeah. a lot of things that are still not even really explained by the time the book is over. So I was And I like, think I part of that is also now that we know that there's three other earlier series. Yeah. Like there's probably a lot of things that we would have questions about in terms of like the world building and, and yeah. things like that that are explained in the earlier series. Um, Can I just say that there's also six books to this series and the covers are amazing. I went yes. on to, I was like, okay, maybe I won't get the, um, if I keep reading, maybe I won't do the audio, but I mean, I like the audio book, but I also want the covers, but then I was they're like, pretty. Ah. Yes. But I was like, oh my God, $23 a cover. <laughs> like, oh my God, six books. I can't you know. do that. I, I have... can't, ju- can't justify that right now. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm even worse. I have the, I have the special, the arcane society special edition hardcovers of the first two books. That's quite part of why we read this. I was like, oh. I want, I want to read these. Those are the ones I've been had what are you gonna of. do for but can you still buy the rest of the i already series? bought the rest of the, oh jesus the series they come in august <laughs> that's a long time i know so i'm gonna clearly listen to it in audio before the- <laughs> oh wow yeah <laughs> but yeah, yeah. yeah it's a problem <laughs> Well, then I was like, I might as well get the hardcovers for an extra couple bucks, but then it doesn't really show you what the hardcovers look like. They look just like the paperback. So I was like, oh, so I wasn't sure. So I didn't Mm. end up, I haven't bought anything yet, but they're all on my wish list. In case anybody wants to guess their favorite author, any books for Christmas? (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. Um, I also have to point out, I know I have a picture of it. This book has the greatest dedication ever. Yeah. It's so good. It's uh, so funny that that's what the dedication says. I and her her dedication for book two is also great. Um, let me find the picture. Okay, it's <laughs> to Jason Momoa. <laughs> if I can't have you in real life, at least I can have you as my book boyfriend. There you go. <laughs> so she has made it very public that Jason Momoa is her inspiration for um, Warwick. Mm-hmm. So that's um really fun. That is fun, you know, to just keep in mind when you're reading. <laughs> he fit. I mean, it definitely feels like she, he is who she like. He, but you know what's everything. funny? Knowing that before I even started 
reading it, I, I still picture somebody a little different in my head. Really? <laughs> Which is funny because you know how I've like my Jackson. Yeah, Jackson is Jason. Jason, Jason Momoa, Momoa, like, maybe yeah. that's why. Cause I can't like, he's already taken it in your head. Both. It can't be both. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a psychological thing. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like I have multiple characters who are Alexander Skarsgård, so I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, of my own creation, multiple characters of my own creation. Um, okay. So, uh, we have kind of talked about this a little bit, but what genre would you fit this book into? Because it is slightly genre defying in a really interesting and fun way. I feel like. Yeah. I think it's definitely like romantic dystopian fantasy. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that it's it's I, I feel like I read somewhere that it's post-apocalyptic, but it takes place years later. So it's not really, um, yeah. at least not to me, it feels a little more, it feels more dystopian because you're like in this setting that has been this yeah. way. This is the way that she grew up. This is all she knows. So it's a little different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, de I definitely would say it's like a dystopian fantasy. Yeah. Um, it's not a historical, historical way though. No. It's like, it's very contemporary feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Almost like across it almost has like kind of like a dystopian so definitely feels dystopian fantasy and then almost has like a slight like urban fantasy like yes I can see that yeah 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 100 mm -hmm. yeah um okay so I agree with all of that and it's funny I wonder if dystopian dystopian fantasy is a genre that is gonna grow more I hope um, so that's what I like writing I know I would and, love it if it did I mean like <laughs> when we were looking for comp books when we were writing, writing World endings, after yeah. and uh well especially the ending series but the ending legacy even which was just like we're like there's nothing we couldn't find anything that we was for sure similar in this mm -hmm. like after the apocalypse but like fantasy more like fantasy anyway this totally i would say fits into that same genre of mm -hmm. dystopian fantasy. So I'm hoping that more dystopian fantasy books and series come out. Yeah, hundred percent. I think it would be great. I agree with that. I agree with it. I think it's a really cool world. It so. is a really cool world. So, and it's not overly like fey <laughs> Yeah, I I like that. I think that's the other thing. There's not like it's there's not like overly magical either. It's like yeah. yeah, there's like these different species or but they still like nobody's like has like wands and like they're like no. you know like hurting people. They're like with my magic it's more it or? more feels like there like there's mentions of people being shifters of certain kinds. It's almost like fey is a term that classifies like all kinds of like magical species that aren't just that, that we have heard about you know like yeah. so there's like the shifters and then there's like sirens and yeah. what else do they mention I mean there's just, just brownies all different brownies yeah and um what is the little nose poker demons um, oh nose poker what the little the one that's always squeaking oh, um God. what was that one uh I don't know but there's also the demons and the yeah so it's like all different they're all classified as fate which I think also made it less like they're not just like elves yeah. and fairies and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah exactly um and I can't remember where I was going with that like my brain just completely farted out um I don't know we but we were just talking about how um it's the the term fae is kind of loosely used in the series it's not yeah. like it, it's a catch-all for pretty much anyone who's not just strictly human. Yeah. Oh, and like the the, the magic-iness of it, besides the mm -hmm. fact that some people are shifters, it almost just seems more like there's like an influence that some people have mm -hmm. over other people. And Brexley, for some reason that we don't necessarily know yet, is somehow immune-ish to a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and there's like definitely hints of like, she is... She was born on, so she was born when the wall fell or like the wall between worlds or whatever the, they call it. The Was it the day of? The day of. Yeah. She was born. Also just so happens to be the day that Warwick died and then came mm -hmm. back to life. What? And neither of them have auras. No. And also. They're very strangely, strongly connected to yes. each other. And also at two points 
well, it was the same point, but it was two different dead bodies that she, or people who she killed when she was like touching them, they like briefly reanimated. And so this is very similar to the fact that Warwick came back to life when she was born. So clearly she, I was like, is she a necromancer? Like, well, she has some sort of magic that has to do with life and death, but also it, it seems to be suggesting that she is very closely linked with the reason that the wall fell in the first place. Yeah. And I also think, um, he was talking about how he's not really human and he's not really fey or he was both once each and now he's neither all now that and i'm seeing they're going since they're both very similar and connected in this inexplicable way it makes me wonder if she's not really human and she like she thinks she is yeah and so then i was like what is her what was her mom who died in childbirth mm-hmm. you know so we don't know but clearly she is something special and a lot of times when the fey people see her like killian and someone else um i can't remember who but when certain people see her they kind of like do a double take like so i'm wondering like if they knew her mom i think and... she also has some sort of a pool too yeah like there's some sort of on every about man her. who ex- yeah oh who my meets god her. don't get me started on that i was like is this gonna, is this gonna be reverse harem i know point? i know i'm like geez please don't i don't know i mean or do like if it's going to like yeah. go all the way there but to, yeah. it, there is a touch of like eye rolling there better be a good explanation for why yeah. every man is falling in love with her yeah yeah I, I think that's yeah I think that's kind of where I'm at too I'm like but I'm, yeah. I'm a, I am I'm getting the sense that there is an explanation yeah well I think so too and especially by the end um of book one which you probably already know some answers that I don't um there's a whole other spin on it and you're just like okay now it, there has to be a reason she's so important and I need to know what it is so mm-hmm. yeah um but yeah so overall yeah uh I kept thinking because there's you, when the story begins she's in love with um is it Caden what's his name Caden I was just trying to remember that <laughs> I think his name might be Caden and then there's Aaron who she slept with who or she lost her virginity to that she hates apparently but then he shows up later and he's a apparently in love with her and then you Um, have also like an idiot yeah oh my by the way i the whole time i was like just die already you're ruining like like, just die like like a douchey idiot like he was so i don't so like in the prison yeah to the guard like i'm a man i don't so yeah like you could just have the option and and let's be clear he knows that this is like the most horrid yeah. prison on yeah. the planet or whatever yeah and he's trying to like man chum with a guard yeah so i guess wait maybe we should back up for a second and just say Sorry. that she ha- was essentially raised by the command i guess he's a commander or general or whatever of like the humans on one side of the wall or one area of the whatever uh city i don't know he, I, I think he's exactly a, his equivalent is like a king he's like yeah king-ish. so he was he was raised king by adjacent a man who gave her essentially all the privileges that um she could possibly want in this world that they live in and then it in like everything and she's the daughter of like a famous general or something who died but her parents are dead though both of them but her parents are dead and her mom is we don't know mystery yeah we don't know her mom her dad yeah they're all gone so she was raised by this guy who she's in love with his son right that's Mm -hmm. his son Caden is his son or whatever his name is this is is her son his son and so they're finally going to get together or whatever. They've been in love with each other. And then he's like, oh, uh, I've been grooming you to marry you off to some horrible person. Oh, Ta-ta. it's gross. Bye-bye. And, and then she- can I just like point out how much I despised Hayden or whatever his name is, Ziz's little like runaway response to that whole situation. I was like, oh my gosh, dude, yeah. like have her back. Yeah. So anyways, all these bad things happen. She ends up in this prison. Obviously, she doesn't marry this old guy that her pseudo dad wanted her to marry, the general or king or whatever. Yeah. And so then all the shit hits the fan. And the, pretty much most of the stories her trying to survive in this prison with all these, mm-hmm. the, the, all this fae that she has been trained to hate her entire life and yeah. not trust and all the stuff. But she has to figure out how to survive in there. And it's very violent. It's very intriguing. It has definitely has like a Hunger Games yes, vibe to there's it. Definitely but like a Hunger Games but vibe. Like, times 10, like it's a little more. <laughs> intense yeah. than that 
Um, Prison and then <laughs> that's when you start meeting all these different characters and eventually they break out. Again. Jesus. <laughs> we are coming back from another moment. I need of something sex- stronger than bubbles. Technical difficult. She might be <laughs> finishing the bottle tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I don't know where we were in our it doesn't matter we'll move on to the next question moving on to the next question oh yeah so we were just saying like is it a reverse harem what the hell so i was going into the whole reason why like all these characters but i believe that i have read that it does not go reverse harem although definitely at this point in the story it feels like it could go in a reverse harem direction yeah so i'm i'm definitely yeah anyway we can move on yeah yeah. yeah there's like a horse shifter guard who's like definitely in love with her at this oh 100 percent. he's all about it aaron's already ki- he's gone he gone aaron's t- yeah she, she so killed he's him. no longer but now we have essentially <laughs> we know three three people for sure who are in love with her still yeah so like her kaden kaden warwick horse shifter and, and warwick, shifter. Yeah. yeah and His now there's xander least- right xander yeah. xander yeah and there's another two i believe so far who are into her in Jesus book two <laughs> and I'm a quarter of the way in. <laughs> okay. well there you have it folks yeah she uh, is she's well, like it's, can I just Faye, say how Kat, Faye Nip. <laughs> I feel like and I this is another thing this is like us I think and our like storytelling brains working too, trying to figure this out because I keep thinking the author and the character herself has gone out of her way to say how tomboyish and not attractive she is. Yes, so, she definitely has a very low opinion of her looks. So I feel like that's another giveaway that there's some magnetic, there's something, something about her. Something extra is going on. Yeah. So magical. Anyway. That's what my spider sensei sense is telling Your me. Your sensei? My sensei. My spider oh. sensei. Okay, so we... um. Let's move on to the next question because we've been talking for quite a, a while any, already and we have more questions to go through. Good. So, uh, again, sorry, baby hiccups. If you see me or hear me making weird noises, guys, he's huge. He's pushing on all of my organs. Um, how did you feel about Brexley's character? I liked her. There were a few instances, though, when I just wanted to like freak out because she was <laughs> pissing me off. Both times on the train when she's like, oh, I wasted too much time after he's telling me to hurry Again. up and do that. I'm just like, <laughs> you're the absolute worst. Um, yeah, that, so she, there was a number of things that really kind of bugged me. Um, but in general, I liked her character, mm-hmm. but like her decision-making skills are horrible. Yeah. Um, and then the whole thing of her trying to escape and go like at the end. And I'm just like, he literally told you not to. And then you go out there and <laughs> that was extremely frustrating. Yeah. So in general, like she made bad decisions, but I liked her character. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she pissed me off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I agree with everything you just said. Um, so, so then, how did you feel about Warwick's character? I thought that he was intriguing for sure. They did a really good job. He with is that. apparently always aroused. Oh my god! Yeah, always, which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> or is it just around her? I don't know. Or I don't know, but, but it's always at very awkward and inopportune times of like mm-hmm. fighting to the death. Yeah, that's, I did, I was like, that's interesting. Or like, riding away on a motorcycle to the death. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> but he's into it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I totally got that too. And then, but when they're alone and they like have these opportunities, nope, nope, nope. That's yeah, like, but he says different. that she, it's funny. He's like, oh, you're not my type or I'm not interested. But let me but poke it's you like, in the eye with my but, arousal. <laughs> my giant arousal he's also giant like huge enormous everywhere he's like just bit he's like she constantly is noting his size yeah everything about him is big what is it she wants to take the bite out of his 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 uh ass is like a round apple she wants to take a bite out of or something like <laughs> I that know. i was laughing but he is because it's so firm <laughs> yeah. laughing i was like well i haven't heard that one yet i mean i've you know not in a book anyway yeah He's uh, definitely got some like animal attraction or whatever. Yeah, it's very primal. Primal. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Wow. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was definitely getting frustrated with 
her and, and she's like he's not even into me it's like um he's clearly oh my god that was bugging me too when she was talking to, was her name rose when he yeah. was talking to rose i'm just like <laughs> oh god spare me i don't need to hear your self-deprecating your denial like everybody <laughs> it's very obvious <laughs> yeah um yeah i do like i do like rose by the way though i like yeah the the prostitute she was yeah. great she was an awesome with a character. british accent that's the not british real ex- she's not she's british. like i'm not but that you know you gotta <laughs> everybody has you gotta a role do. to play yeah i, was like, I know oh, that's awesome <laughs> she's like i'm not british yeah um okay so uh i will have to i do have one note about warwick's character my mm-hmm. phone is timed out which is where my notes are um but let's see if i can find them again um <laughs> this is the most random note ever but the only other time that I have heard Warwick anywhere near a person's name is the Earl of Warwick from the War of the Roses, like from the White Queen and that stuff. And so that's like that guy kept like popping into my head. Oh, really? Was like, no, go away. You know who kept popping Come into back, my Jason head? Momoa. You know who kept popping into my head? Because uh, Warwick Brown is from CSI. Oh, okay. And I had the biggest crush on him. Um, oh, he's a beautiful, beautiful black man with really beautiful <laughs> eyes. And I was like, oh, I could lick all over him. I kept thinking of him, actually, every time I heard it. Um, I don't know if it's, I think it's Rorick, not Rorwick, but that's what I, or I don't know. I don't know how the spelling is, but that's mm-hmm. what I kept thinking of or who I kept thinking of. I didn't even think about the War of the Roses, but good point. <laughs> valid, valid point. The King I wonder Maker. If his, his nickname the was King the Maker. King Maker. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if there's some sort of tie I, in or. I, I kind of wonder that too, if, if there was a reason why she chose that name, but. Um. <laughs> I don't know. There, in my head, there is no link between the Kingmaker and Jason Momoa. So, well, maybe one day we'll ask her. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, uh, did you see moving towards the end of the story? Did you see the betrayal twist at the end coming ahead of time? No, I did not. Do you? I did not either. I was completely blindsided. So, like, Brexley is all groping him. I think he was just shot. <laughs> Yeah, he um, was. And they're on a motorcycle. And they're on a motorcycle running for their lives. Um, and she's groping him and he's like fondling the crease in her pants or something. Like she's like halfway to orgasming at this point. Yeah. And probably like the record. She's like almost there. And and then he turns her over to the fake ruler. Yeah. I honestly <laughs> was blindsided. And I will just say that at that before that happened, I was like, ah, I'm on the fence if I want to keep going. And then that happened, and I'm like, I have to read the next book. <laughs> it was like, really I have smart. To understand this. I mean, it was a horrible cliffhanger. Yeah. Horrible, brutal, yeah. brutal. Um, but it was great. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, and I don't even really get. I can't remember. What did he get in return? Did it ever? We don't know. Oh, we don't know. Okay. Well, other than the his debt is paid off or something. Yeah, but we didn't. He was actually going to hand him something, and I don't remember. He handed him like an envelope, and we don't know what exactly. That that right there, yeah, is what's going to make me Mm. keep going with the series. So to answer your next question, yes, I'm going to continue (laughs) the series. I already know you're going to. So yes, I'm going to. I did only just finish it today, so I have not gotten that far. (laughs) I have not gotten to the next book yet. But. Okay, cool. Well, I'm excited since I think this is the first one that we're both continuing. Yeah. And so it'll be fun to check in as we yeah. get further into the series. Agreed. Um, okay, so uh, I do want to talk about the comp titles because yeah, it's such an oddball genre mashup. Um, mm-hmm. And I have a couple of ideas too. Uh, so, um, and I have like specific reasons why it made me, why these, each of these is kind of a comp title. <laughs> okay. Um, so my first one is Guild. Um, and the specific thing about Guild that was that I would say is a comp title because it doesn't have like the dystopian element at all, but um is the sense of the the big bad sexy kind of like boogeyman guy who they all like everybody Warwick uh Farkosh is like someone who she in her like war college has like 
learned all about he's a rumor he's a a myth a legend, a legend. Yeah. yeah a myth and I was like as the more they talk and he's supposed to be super sexy and the more they talked about him I was like oh I feel like he is gonna be the love interest <laughs> which totally fits with I can't remember what the guy's name is in guild but um was it the yeah I didn't finish that series I only read that first book I do want to continue that series I have not had a chance to yet yeah um one of mine was we already talked about the ending world I think in general it's a really good comp because it's contemporary when I think specifically about the ending series the Savage North Chronicles it has that very contemporary gritty feel to it so it feels realistic but Mm -hmm. then it has that little bit of make-believe so in this instance it's not fey it's genetic engineering so it's superpowers Mm -hmm. but i think it's very similar Mm -hmm. and Um, definitely comes across more fantasy-ish exactly the ending legacy exactly because we say yeah exactly and so i think that that all works really well so the ending legacy is has a little like that's what much more dystopian but it's in the same world it makes sense they have a magic system based on you know genetic Mm -hmm. engineering um, and then you have the Savage North Chronicles and then the ending series. I think that that, those all actually are actually really comparable, which I like. Mm-hmm. And then I also thought Noir Roberts, the Chronicles of One, that, um, oh, that year series, one. yeah, the one, yeah. And then whatever the other books are, I only mm-hmm. read the first book, but I feel like that also narrated modern- by Julia Whalen. I feel like that, that at least book one, again, I haven't read the whole series, but I've read book one and that always to me was felt very similar to the ending series and the ending world so i definitely think that that has a place in there too yeah so if you like those then i think you would yeah like yeah i agree i completely forgot about that one yeah. um but yeah i would agree with that um i also for a kind of random reason would say shadow and bone um mostly because of the eastern european setting yeah. um and shadow and bone had like a bit of a even though it was like a secondary world, not our world um, setting, it did have like kind of a, like a German, what did they call it? Like a, it was like Russian feeling, but um, yeah, but it had like a, a dystopian kind of like feel like, or like the world was not doing well yeah or something. Um, But the, a lot of just, military involvement. Yeah. I think that has a key. That's a key yeah. to it everything has based around the military um do you have any others Mm-mm. okay um the two that i added while we were talking um again so angel fall angel fall by susan e um man i haven't read that in a long oh time. my god i loved that book and i need to listen to that again i don't think i ever finished the series i think it wasn't done yet maybe when mm-hmm. i it was... wasn't um but that first book was so good and <laughs> or I haven't thought about it in a long time, but it had like a tr- one of the most truly horrifying scenes that I can remember in a book, like with the younger sister. Do you remember I that? Remember, no. Oh my gosh, it is hor- like I have the paperback and the audiobook. I need to go back and read that. That is a I really remember good... really enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Um, but it, it uh very much uh dystopian fantasy the angels in this case um but it's definitely like i don't know 10 years after the end of the the apocalypse i remember being really gritty yeah, yeah it was very gritty so i definitely would put this in that same um vein and then <laughs> for not for any kind of dystopian reason at all although i guess it technically kind of is um but a ruin of roses and i think it's deliciously dark fairy tales is the name of the series by kf breen <laughs> Um, which I do think actually has a dystopian element, um, but not not anywhere near as blatant as this um, or as Angel Fall or as the ending legacy. Um, but because of a specific character, which I think is named Hadriel, um, reminds me of the brownie <laughs> who is so silly and ridiculous. Um, so there, there are just some like comedic elements that kind of like lighten things up that I felt like in KF Brains, deliciously dark fairy tales are like way like expanded upon, but there is that similar kind of thread there. So those were all of my comps. Cool. Um, I haven't read the last one, but yeah. 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 Um, which is also a beauty and the beast 
retelling sort of with shifters. So, um, okay. So, uh, any final thoughts? No, other than I recommend it, especially if you like any of the books that we've written, I mm-hmm. think you would like it. So yeah, I definitely, I definitely if you are a, a fan of the ending world, if that's like how you found us and how you started listening to this, um, then I would definitely say like, you should check this one out. Yeah, no, it's cool. Like I said, I'm excited to keep going and I'm just like, do I do the audiobook or get the paperback? I don't know. <laughs> I better get both. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's probably how it's going to end up. Um. Okay. Yeah. And I will say her dedication in book two is also pretty epic. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it was something like to everyone who hates me, I'm sorry, or like this book's not going to make it any better or something like that. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I like it's it. so good. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It was much more it was much better, like worded much better than what I just did, but <laughs> that's, but it was enough. really great. I was like, <laughs> like yeah, unapologetic, eh, nothing I can do. I love it. <laughs> not going to get any better. Yeah. So, um, thank you so much for, li- for listening, everyone. Don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode's links and book recommendations. And we will be back in a couple of weeks to chat about our next indie book, Dark King, book one of The Court of the Sea Fae by C.N. Crawford. So again, we're going Fae, but this one looks more like merfolk. So I feel like, again, it's not going to like... We'll see. Trigger my Fae version. <laughs> we'll see. Who knows? So, and I'm sure we'll give you an update on how far we are in uh, the Savage Lands series as well. So um, if you're enjoying the show, we would love it if you left us a rating and or a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen. That allows for that sort of thing. And until next time, happy reading. Happy reading.